This is another new episode of Toast Life Podcast, the best, most organic, most authentic podcast. And for the first time, we have a dancer, an actor, a dad, a dude doing it right now for the longest. You've been Thank in the you. industry for going on acting wise for nine years now. Nine years, but we got Amen. Mr. Andrew Jacobs in the house, baby. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Quick backstory that nobody knows. I met Andrew at 24 Hour. Yep. Facts. West Covina. West Covina, yeah. West Covina. In the sauna. In the sauna. Yeah, in the sauna. And then we seen each other one more time at 24 Hour on Walnut. Yeah, yep. Damn, that was a long time ago. Yep. But you probably seen this, this guy busting some crazy moves either on Hollywood. Or Santa Monica. Santa Monica. Yep. And is that where you started? I started... I started dancing in Hollywood street performing when I was nine. Ooh. Yeah, I was nine, 2001. And um, when I started out there, there was just this guy by himself out there just, you know, flipping and stuff, just trying to put a, put a hat out, trying to make some money. And yeah. my mom was working at, a, at one of those uh, Starlight Tours kiosks. So she was like, hey, my son likes to dance like Michael Jackson and stuff. Like, can you teach him some, you know, some flips some or whatever? And um, I'll keep an eye on him. And he was like, yeah, of course. And then... We just created a bond from there, and then as the years went on, more people would walk by, and they'd be like, oh, I break. You guys break. Can I join? And then we just created a whole crew. So you started breaking since nine. Since nine, yeah. In Hollywood. Yep. Hollywood Boulevard. Dude, honestly, I'm gonna, we're going to clap it up for that one. <laughs> so lit, what got you into dancing? What made you fall in love with dancing? Like, what, what's that backstory that we all want to know? Um, so I grew up. <clears throat> I grew up, I'm adopted. So when I, for the first years of my life, when I, you know, was with my real family, my birth family, um, I was really into Michael Jackson. Mm. So we used to get his VHS tapes and I'll just pop them in and then I'll put on like my, you know, my grandpa's little dress shoes and I'll just be trying to copy them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to just copy all his moves and that's what made me fall in love with dancing, Michael Jackson. Yeah, damn. Yeah. So you're... We're taking it back now to a young Andrew growing up. Mm -hmm. So how was that? What did you take from growing up, being adopted? Like, how has that made you into the person you are now? Oh, growing up, being adopted um, made me the way I am and who I am because all the obstacles I had to overcome in life. Um, You know, I've been through a lot. And I was actually just thinking about it when I was driving here. I was like, you know, if if I can stop and look back at what I've done in my life with being a father, you know, trying to pursue acting and doing my dancing. I was like, in reality, from what I've been through, I, I should be proud of myself. You know, I yeah. could be like, you know, what? I've done, I've done enough in order for me to feel good about myself. And, you know, at least show that my son could look up to me, you know, like a good yeah, yeah. father figure. So like you're leading, you're leading by example. So you, when your son gets to that age, which, Clearly now he's he's almost yeah <laughs> almost there. Yeah. He gets to see that the most inspiring person, somebody doing it, is his dad, yeah. right? Like you're and not letting anything stop me. Like just always pushing forward. Like I don't care how bad things have been in my life. Like I have always chosen to overcome them. You know, That's even when it feels like I can't, like I always do. Have you felt and like that? Like uh, throughout that journey? Like have you felt oh, all the time? You know, I still. To this day, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I took the time today. Still today, I, I can be like, dang, man, this is too hard. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Yeah. How am I going to do it? But I think of my kid, and I think of me when I was a kid, and I'm like, if, if I became a whole different person from when I look back at myself, then I can do it for my kid and have him have somebody to look up to, you know? So it's, it's hard, but somebody's got to do it, man, you know? Damn. I didn't think we were going to cry today, but I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now th- you came out in a Netflix series, right? Mm-hmm. It was yeah. a two-season uh, Netflix thing, right? So I, I joined in on the second season on of the that. season. And um, unfortunately, it was uh, uh, they ended the show there. So I was like, dang, just one <laughs> more. Give me one more, you know? But If um, everybody's a fan of the paranormal movies from back then, that's where I found out about this guy. The paranormal, the marked ones. Yeah, that's that's for what the started raza, it all. Yeah, hell the yeah. people that yep. was literally. I mean, I want to say like a Mexican 
uh, paranormal movie yeah, compared worse, to yeah. the other ones. Yeah. And that that was like the that starstruck moment. We're at the gym. You walked. You were there in the sauna. I was like, I've seen this fool. That's I was like, cool. I've seen him acting. But how was that landing? Was that your first movie role that you? Yeah, landed? that was my first acting role. Ooh, yeah. And you're yeah. the you're the main star. Yeah. Um, a lot of like fellow actor friends and stuff now. Like when I hear their journey and I hear you know how they came, um, that's what helps me know that it's, there's no rush to it, you know? Like, yeah. there, I don't have to be like, oh, man, like, I'm turning 30. I need to, you know, be on top of the world. Of course, I'd love to. Yeah. But sometimes you got to just know that it's a waiting game. Some of and these actors that get a, their big break until... Yeah, until 30 years later, 20 30, years later, you know? 40, 50. And I started off with such a bang, you know? It was my third audition. You know, I had never really even... I never had the full experience yeah. of getting to, you know, like, doing roles and things like that. So third audition get a call, hey, they want you for this movie. I had no idea it was Paranormal Activity. Um, I knew it was for a big studio. It was for Paramount Pictures, but I had no idea. Get the call back. Meet the director. And I'm just going through these steps, and I'm like, I just started. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. (laughs) Get the final call. Like, hey, you're doing the movie. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Still don't know it's Paranormal Activity. Because they try to keep it, like, super secretive. Like, they don't want anything to get leaked out. Yeah. So, no, we were in the movie. We are filming the movie. I mean, we were... Wait, so you were filming? I'm filming you, already for but, like two months. But you didn't even know. I have no idea it's paranormal activity. We thought it was a movie. It was going to be called the Oxnard Tapes because it took place in Oxnard. So it was going to be called the Oxnard Tapes, and we're filming for like two months. And then one day the director goes like, "Hey guys, um, can we have like a little group thing?" So all yeah. the actors we get together and we're like, oh, "What's up?" He's like, "All right, so um, just want you guys to know that we're actually filming the next paranormal activity." And we were just like, "What?" And I was like, "Damn!" For my first experience, like that was sick. I'm in a movie that I've seen. That yeah. I know. There was every, a you know, third one, right? The fifth in the series. It was Paranormal 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the marked ones. Dang. So, yeah. That, it was dope. It was cool. <laughs> so Can't complain. With getting into movies, well, landing that role, after, like, what was that feeling watching the movie? Did you go to the premiere? Did you see yeah, it there? Of course, yeah. What was um, the emotion, like? I mean, premieres are pretty sick. I've never been invited. If anybody has a movie you want to invite Next time, look, when I got a movie that drops, I got you. You're Wait, but me. you announced it. You just announced that you're a part of one, aren't you? Yeah, I just finished filming a movie. Yeah. Yep. I just yeah. finished. Well, you're, I got to. We have to. We got to give you the flowers. Yeah, this one, I'm, I'm actually excited to see um, what comes of it because it's a dope movie. And um, it's the first, like in Paranormal Activity, I used to have a lot of tattoos. Like, my whole neck was tatted. Yeah, yeah. My hands were, like, t- tattooed. And um, I was going to make up every day on, you know, two yeah. and a half hours every day covering my whole neck and stuff. And then that's what led me to doing tattoo removal. I was like, I don't want to, like, limit my chances of working. Mm-hmm. So let me start going through the, the time, the pain, you know, the money, of course. And I removed my whole neck, um, removed my hands. My lower arm is starting to fade out. So I'm just going, like, little by little. And um, I... With this one, I'm also clean cut. So, like, I'm playing like this. Like, I'm in a preppy school. I'm, I'm part of this swim team. And, I mean, I'm wearing, like, you know, trunks. And <laughs> I got no tattoos on any part of my body. And, like, really going through that much makeup. Like, yeah. full. Because you're tattooed. You know, from ankles to, to you know, top of my shoulders. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That was an experience. And I was, like, I'm excited for people who do know me and the people who don't know me to see see a different side, you know, and, and see, like, okay, and, and, and forget, like, oh, that's a tattooed dude on, on Instagram or dancing in the street, you know? <laughs> so I'm excited for this. It's going to be really cool. So what was that moment when you saw yourself for the first time on the big screen? First time I saw myself on the big screen, I was next to all my close homies. I was, you know, just surrounded with people that I, you know, I could say that I love in life, like, you know, my friends and all that, and a bunch of strangers, you know, like a couple hundred different strangers in this big old, you know, when back then when it was the, you know, when the Arclight Dome was still there, it was in the dome, we had the premiere and um, it was crazy, man. Um, I, even just thinking about it right now, I haven't actually thought about it, <laughs> but it like, it was surreal, you know, and I can't, I hope I get to have that, those moments for a long time, you know. Um, sure. I mean, you, you have not stopped working. Yeah. So, why do you why do you keep going to dance in Hollywood in Santa Monica? 
Has anybody asked you this? Yeah, of and, course. Uh, yeah, th- so there'll like, be people that'll see me and they'll be like, hey, man, don't you do movies? Like, why are you still dance on the street? And I'm like, yeah, but I ain't rich yet, you know? <laughs> I'm still a hustler. I'm still going to, you know, I'm going to take care of myself the way I need to, take care of my kid the way I need to, you know? So just because I make maybe a nice, big, fat check that I've, you know, never thought I'd make that kind of money in one shot, you know, I, I'm not necessarily the smartest person. I don't know how to invest. I don't know how to do these things. And now I'm getting to that where I'm like, okay, now – the next big job I get, I want to learn how to put things in place that I can take care of myself in a longer, you know, in a long way. But everything I've got so far, I'm just so used to like the lifestyle I lived, which is just like, you know, just dancing on the streets and I just live day to day, you know, day by day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's why I still dance out there because it keeps me on top of my game and keeps me in shape. And um, it also makes me happy. That's where my friends are. I get to hang out with my friends and make people smile and make money. Why what's not? The, what's the craziest story you have from dancing in Santa Monica and Hollywood? What? Santa Monica, I don't really have too many crazy can, stories. Can I say the fighting one? Yeah, I'll talk about everything. It's cool. <laughs> <I don't care. laughs> you box somebody in Hollywood. Yeah, so that, yeah, that viral video, huh? <laughs> um, and that was, um, he doesn't that just was a dance, long time ago. Boxes. That was a long time ago, actually. Yeah. But that went... That went viral, um, and everybody was hitting me up like, yo, it's crazy, man. Like, yo, w- when was this, today? And I'm like, nah, man, that's like three years ago. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, you know, I, dancing on the street, you're going to come around, come across a lot of people. You know, you come around a lot of tourists, happy people. It's Hollywood. You got a lot of crazy people, a lot of drunk people. Yeah. A lot of people who, you know, just they see you living life and smiling and enjoying yourself, and they want to bring you down with them. So yeah. I get why, that all the time. Like, why the fuck are you so happy? Yeah, like, I'm fucking miserable walking around like yeah. I'm gonna I'm a try to punk you and you know I'm this little skinny jeans and long hair and then you know and people just try to mess with me and, and they punk the wrong person and then I just you know give them the two piece chicken McNuggets <laughs> you know they got that that two piece it's the favorite for a lot of people but a lot of people don't want to eat that one but was that the craziest one you've ever interacted or has there been a crazier one no unfortunately no um, that's actually probably like in one of the most just simple, quick, like very peaceful kind of yeah. um, altercations I, I've had to go through out there. Um, I've been through some really, really crazy stuff out there. Um, you know, I've never been one to uh, pursue any trouble. Um, I, like I said, I go out there to make my money. You know, it's where I go every single weekend. I'm not going to go somewhere and and, you know, what's the saying? Um, don't p- shit where you eat or whatever, yeah, you know? So yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to go somewhere, mess up where I work and, and put a bad reputation out. But if people come at me, I'm, I'm, you know, I like to feel myself as like, um, I don't know, kind of like a protector, you know? Yeah. And I think that's like my father instinct. Like I'm with my friends and I know like, okay, if somebody comes and attacks us, I know I have more of a skill to protect, to protect us. So yeah. why am I going to put you in that? If someone's fucking with you, I'll step in the middle and I'll... So, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of bullshit has happened out there. Try and to de-escalate um, stuff first. And, and then, you know, it just yeah, yeah. It just happens, man. It's because I think a, a lot of, when you're growing in your platforms, and obviously you got your blue check already. <laughs> yeah, that was dope, too. <laughs> you you yeah, got yeah. the blue check, and you're, you're in movie roles, you're dancing, you're on social media. There's a thought process that has to go through, or we all have to go through that. I mean, you can, how you said, you could get ran, uh, somebody random and try to knock you down from that, right. that yeah. high horse. Try to make you act out, and you're going to end up on TMZ, and, yep. and it's over. Yeah, I get, I get reminded of that, like, especially from my mom. You know, my mom is, like, always on me. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. You know, one day that's going to get out. And I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. And it's still a change that, like I said, that's one of those things where earlier where I was saying, mm-hmm. like, I still sit here sometimes. I'm like, damn, you know, how is it going to change? How is it going to get better? And. Yeah, I don't want to be out there on the streets and needing to hustle and having people, like, you know, mess with my happiness, mess with what I'm comfortable doing. So eventually, yeah, I, I would like to step away from that. And when I do get to the place where, you know, I'm more successful and maybe more people know me, I won't have to be out there hustling and, yeah. you know, putting myself in a dangerous position. So I'll just kick back, relax, put my feet <laughs> up, and be like, all right, I'm cool now. Yeah, watch you yourself know? on the big screen a little yeah. bit there, be on your I don't need to be out on the streets <laughs> hustling. <laughs> Yeah, so what is there, when was that transition for you? Because the person you are right now, mm-hmm. how long did it take for this Andrew to be here? Like, 
Was it two years ago, three years ago? Was it your first movie, after your first movie? No, I, um, just, you know, being honest, you know, I'm, um, even when I had, at first I thought, I grew up, you know, I was in, in you know, the gang lifestyle and, and all that at a really young age. And then um, when I had my kid, I had promised myself, I was like, okay, you know, once I have my son, I'm going to change my whole life, you know, and I wouldn't want to put my kid what I went through. You know, I grew up in foster homes. I grew up, you know, I was adopted later down the line and, you know, I'm blessed for that. That's why, you know, I'm blessed to have my mom who took me in and, you know, raised me and took care of me. And um, I was like, I, I would never put my kid through that. So I'm a change. And then my son is here. And then here I am still fucking up yeah. and, and trying not to, but you're just so used to your, your, you know, the habits, the habits, the bad yeah. ways. And I found myself, you know, messing up a lot. And then I would get reminded like, Hey, you have something important now. You have a reason, you have a purpose. And I could just kept trying, kept trying. And then that's what got me into acting. I was like, you know what? Let me try to do something better. That's what turned me into acting. That's what I got lucky landed paranormal activity. That's why I'm still acting right now. And it's still a chain. It's still a, um, it's still a process, man. Um, <laughs> Life, man. Life is an ongoing... But if I could look at myself, like, from, what, even 10 years ago, like, I'm a whole different person. Yeah. I still have certain bad habits that might want to come out, and I'm still learning about, and it's just a process, what's, but... What's the bad habit? Just, like, 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 just me simply just being in an altercations all the time. Just something simple as that, like... Is it the patience? Is it the... Like, patience, uh, you know, being... My boy, he, Dylan has too a, temperamental. My boy, you know? Dylan, is a short fuse. He goes to sleep mad, wakes up mad. Yeah, no, I'm not he like eats that. Mad. <laughs> Every time we go out, he's just like, fuck, man. Hopefully we get down today. I'm like, no, hopefully you we don't. Those, huh? you <laughs> I'm, stay like, away. I'm like, hopefully we don't, Dylan. We got to get home. <laughs> yeah. But See, before I used to be like, not like, oh, I hope I get into some shit today, but I'll be like, when it comes, I'm ready. You know, <laughs> but now I'll just be like, I don't want to go to that spot because I already know it's going to, yeah, yeah. I know what kind of crowd it is. I'm just kick back over here. Different. Let me do something more mellow. So it's just, you know, like I said, just changing, man, slowly. It changes. Yeah. So you said now you you went through the transition or you went through the process of taking your, taking off your tattoos. Yep. First of all, it's expensive. Yeah, they say yeah, it's yeah. more expensive than when you actually get tattoos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go to a nonprofit. Okay. Um, it's called Clean Slate. And they they you know, work with what you can afford. So it's, you know, it is very affordable compared to Other these spots. big spots. Yeah, and yeah. they do a great job, obviously. But, you know, of course, you're not just going in there for one shot, you know. I think my neck took me probably like seven sessions. My hand, probably like five. My lower arm, I'm going on my third session. So even though it's a, a good price thing, with all those sessions, <laughs> it kind of turns into more So you know, what's more the most meaningful tattoo you've had on you? Right here, my son. This is when he was three. Ooh. So, you know, like eight years ago. Damn. Yeah. As, he's almost a teenager, man. A couple Has more you years. Has he already brought home his first girlfriend? Nah. He's still, he, what I love about my son is he'll still, like, play super, super innocent and just be like, he's, like, he still acts like a baby with us, right? Yeah. Like, he will, you know, just be a little kid, but then... I'll catch him, like, I, you know, when he's on his own thing, and then I'll see him, like, acting all different and shit, and I'm like, okay, you, you are growing, and I can see that. Yeah. We, um, he posted this TikTok the other day, and I'm, I, find, like, I wish I was remembering the song, because I was just talking about it the other day, and he was lip singing, and he was, like, doing, like, a selfie style, and he was, like, licking his lips, and the song says something about, like, oh, I can't remember the song. It's a famous song that I'm sure we all know, yeah. but I don't know, it's something on the lines of, like, oh, you like when I, like, when I'm deep in, you know, like, <laughs> and he's licking his lips, and I'm like, his mom sent it to me. She was like, "Hey, um, you know, you have what a can conversation? we do?" She was like, "Do I have?" The, she was like, "I'd rather you have the conversation." And I was like, "Yeah." I, she <laughs> was time. like, "Or should we just like, or are, are we being too protective? Like, should we just give him a little freedom?" I was like, "I agree with what you're saying, but not with, not you with know, this. some pussy yeah. and shit like that." Nah. So we got at him, and then he was just like. Oh no! I didn't even like really understand what they were saying. I, I'm just like, get the fuck out of here! You know, <laughs> licking his lips, squinting his like, eyes. Like, <laughs> he's making. He's doing his. Uh, what do you guys call it when you put on your photos for the movies? His. Uh, the what? You got it. The headshots. 
No, that's just what, what do you mean? Like, is don't they have don't they you need to take pictures like when you go to like oh, okay, yeah, movie? headshots, yeah, yeah. 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 I know, I, I kind of know something research. I thought you were saying like putting on your face when you go film a movie. I'm like, makeup, <laughs> no, 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 headshots. Yeah. So, you are our honestly our first actor, technically, yep. first dancer on this podcast, dope, which dope. I appreciate you to the most. What is the process? I thought to you were gonna be like, can you do a spin on the table? <laughs> Like no, <laughs> camera stop. We're gonna do this. <laughs> We're gonna bring out the cardboard right now. What is the What is the process to land a a role? Not in a movie, in a skit. Like what is that? You tell me. I'm trying to land one right now. No, um, <laughs> it's um, ah, it's 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 a. Uh, sometimes it can be super stressful. Um, I've been lucky enough. Like when the trinkets, you know, the Netflix show happened. It just kind of like basic. You know, it was during. Um, no, it was actually right before COVID and everything happened. So I did a self tape recorded at home, you know, get to do it as many times as you want. Cause you're at home, send it in. Once you're like, okay, this is the final product. You send it in. They'll hit you back. If they like you like, Hey, we liked him. Can he do it again? Here's some notes, switch it up. That's like your call back. If they like you after that, um, sometimes it'll be like, Hey, here's the contracts negotiation let's do this or sometimes it'll be like we want you in the room and it's gonna be the director the producer the writer they want to see you do it and see how you work with them is that nervousness uh not anymore i actually like prefer i get more nervous when i'm doing the first step when it's just by myself doing the self tapes at home now (laughs) i'm like oh i could do better let me do it again and then it's like an hour later i'm like damn shit i think the first one was the best one you know but when you're in that like final stage to me now it's like that pressure makes me perform well and you're good at it and i'm not i don't get nervous or any of that that's mm-hmm. when I'm, if there's a director producer everybody in the room like that's when i you know my chest is up i'm smiling and i'm like let's get it and i i don't mess up and i feel super confident Damn. so is it just more once you're in the in the line of a movie or set like are you just building relationships and that's how you can land another one or are you doing your research every single day um, yeah, I'm, I'm still new to it. So, you know, um, I'm still, I haven't had the opportunity yet to like where I'm working with the director or certain actors and it's like, Hey, I'm going to bring you on this next project with me yeah. that, you know, I've heard stories like that and that does happen. And I think those are the relationships you want to build, you know, people that can help you. And of course, you know, you helping them as well, just, you know, creating a team. Yeah. I think that's very important. What's and your team look like right now? Um, shit, I'm going actually, to be honest, transitioning and, and switching my team because I've been rocking with, you know, my, my friends and everything and I'll always love them, but sometimes you, you just gotta change move it up your a little chess bit. pieces around and, you know, f- form something better. So yeah. I'm actually trying to do that now. And I have some really good friends of mine that, um, I look up to and, I don't really spend as much time with them or, or talk to them as much. But when we do, it's all like love and they're always giving me game. And then I'm like, you know, you show so much love and you're teaching me. And why don't I just, put his energy you know, there. yeah, put my time, put my energy there and help each other build. And X. I just actually had one of um, a talk like that with one of my friends. And he was like, let's start doing this. Let's start creating our own projects, let's start writing our own stuff. Let's start filming our own stuff. And, you know, I'm like, yep, are you big that's on, what I need are to you do. Are you big on TikTok right now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on, still trying to figure bro. it out. I have TikTok. I post like once every like two, three weeks. And I'm really, I'm, same thing with social, um, Instagram. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I'm not good at it. I'll, I literally post like once a month, once every few weeks. And then I'll like see my followers dropping and I'm like, ah, fuck it. But does it matter? Like, does it matter to you in a sense, like you care about those type of numbers or you just care more about what, like your roles and stuff like that, that you're landing? I care more about, like, the roles and stuff that I'm landing. And because I also know, like, if I'm filming something and I have, like, this movie out and there's, you know, a billboard out or commercials out, oh, fans are falling. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, yeah. and then if you go a, a whole year and it's like, dang, I had a rough year. You know, I tried my best and I just didn't book anything and you're not filming anything. You start seeing those people just, like, kind of disappear. And it's like, eh, do you really give a fuck about me? Yeah. Not really. Uh, that's the tough And it's part. just like, I don't... I try to not let things like that get to me. Like, at first, I was like, damn, like, you know, they don't care about you unless you're on top. Like, that sucks. Now I'm like, hey, I'm not on top. I'm going through my personal path. Yeah. 
And that's okay. I'm not going to feel bad just because you guys are not like, you know, loving me right now. I'm going to focus on myself, do what I need to without the pressure of like, oh, I need to keep these people entertained, focus on myself. And then when it happens, that's going to come anyways. Yeah. It's inevitable. Uh, it is. Like, that's, uh, we're going through that right now with uh, the numbers wise, TikTok, IG, YouTube. It's just like, damn. And they, they ask me like, yo, like, what do you do? And I'm like, fuck, we're posting three times a day on TikTok. We're posting twice on IG, every money on YouTube. We're doing content consistently, but it's because algorithms and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. For sure. And, and that's why I was like, oh, I wonder if he's really nah, like, man. big on that. But I need to just because, like I said, I don't really care about it too much. Yeah. But I do know that's like that is our life. You know, that yeah. is where we're at. And I do want to learn. Um, I guess I'm just so focused right now on on on, you. on me yeah. and you know becoming what I want to be. That putting that extra little time on the side of like creating content and doing that, I don't really find the time for that. But yeah. if I can, I, I think that's you know it, it'll only help me. As long as you're taking your time for you, that's you know that's not even time wasted. Yeah. So when you who has been you've met people. Who has been like the top actor or person you have met in your journey right now? Um, man, um, that's a good one. Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucker. <laughs> um, cut these fucking snakes off this motherfucking plane. Who is the? I guess like, like, hey, nice to meet you. Or been around about the same I've been thing. around a lot of, like, because I've been to some cool-ass yeah, events. Yeah, we could say, oh, I've been around this person. Oh, you met him? Nah, they were just in the same room. Yeah, yeah, you? yeah. I've been around some cool-ass people, you know, like, because of events and stuff through, throughout acting. I'm like, oh, shit. So now you're like, in the Hollywood fucking, you know? yeah. I've been to a couple, you know, can't, can't lie. Um, but, like, actually meeting, like, um, I actually just did a short with him. Um, we did a little short film, and... I was a producer on it and playing his nephew on it. And I thought it was dope because I grew up watching a lot of dope stuff that he's in. And I just think for, you know, our people, he's a, a you know, someone huge in our culture. And, um, and then I also bought his book because he had just came out with a book. And I was like, oh, I'm going to work with him. So let me, I want to start reading his story. And then reading his story, just the first chapter, I was like, damn, there's a lot of shit that I've can com relate yeah. to and same school and same this and same that and you know and um so Danny Trejo I think that's a dope ass person. I was about to say Machete yeah. Yeah, so I was I gonna say it <laughs> if like pr actually meeting and sitting down and having a conversation with and like just seeing everything they've done with themselves and yeah. overcome and then how humble they are I like people like that so I think I would say Danny Trejo right now fuck it we're gonna go eat at a taco spot right now shit <laughs> I'm run it run it <laughs> podcast we spoke it into existence we're gonna get a whole production we're ready hell yeah I mean we're learning to, I'm still learning this shit along the way oh this is dope this is like this is dope already it was what you said earlier uh, the environment people around me team wise that was one thing that when we brought it out here to LA was was the goal and I'm like alright we, I mean, it was cool podcasting at home with my lady, with my kid. But I was like, all right, if I want to continue, get bigger, get the message out to more people and reach a lot more people, I need to switch this up. Yep. And Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of the comfort zone. I mean, we came the first time to LA, and it was just like, damn, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Went to one spot. We did two, that, two episodes that day, same thing, and we're like, okay, cool, nice. And then we came here, and it was like, "All right, we're gonna stick. We're gonna stick to here." But it's the chasing the numbers, uncertainty. And it was like, "All right, we're not getting them yet. We're not getting them yet." Mm -hmm. And I mean, I continued on TikTok, and I didn't get that algorithm until maybe two months ago. And I'm like, "All right, I gotta go heavy." Boom! Started figuring out some algorithms. Started figuring everything out. I was doing more of the research, and then we landed fucking Duno. Shout out Duno. Shout out his squad. He's his own he's his own vibe, bro. He's putting on for the people at twenty three yeah. years old. Yeah. But after that it was it's just TikTok. TikTok has and one thing we always tell anybody, go on TikTok. TikTok, yeah. TikTok will find you. I'm gonna post a damn video today. Yeah. We did it before you got here. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, hey, we gotta post right now. Because they're just times and luckily the the last one that we did too with Michelle, she's big on TikTok. 
I mean, just they. I think for them, they land. They land appearances. Appearances. They get paid for polls. YouTube pays them everything. So I mean, social media is just fucking huge. Of course, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I need to learn. For sure, <laughs> I need to. Well, the one thing we're taking from today is we're gonna we're, we have to run a TikTok, Rico. Yeah. So yep. the your dad. There's not a lot of dads that we get on here besides. I think we had Jason. He's a dad. Who else? Moms, Gabriella, and then me. Shit. First of all, any more kids in your picture? Um, Are you shooting for more? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. At first, I said no. Because once my son started getting older, I was like, all right, I'll be 36. He'll be 18. I'm young as shit. Like, yeah. I'm cool. Gonna be that you cool know? dad we'll at the parties. Cool. And then, so I was like, no, I'm good. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I think that comes if you, you know, in a relationship, you Definitely. thinking about marriage. Of, of course, it's going to be in the conversation and happen. And if it happens, then I'm open to it. Yeah. The biggest thing you took from being, being in fatherhood? The biggest thing I took from being in fatherhood is... Always trying to do better for yourself because that's going to reflect on your child. So if you can change yourself and do better, then that's the best thing that your child can see growing up. And I think that's what that changing, never changing, always doing better. Damn. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring this up. I still remember good. Tell me. You went into music. Yes, yep. You have yep. a couple singles out. Mm -hmm. What got you into music? Why I've did always you loved, take... I've always loved music. Huh? He, just, he does it all. He dances, he acts, he sings, or he raps. Yeah. Um, I've always loved music, and um, I think dancing comes with it. You know, I just like being, you know, get my little drink on, two-step like, and he's grooving. A, he's a Hispanic Chris Brown, just boom, <laughs> singing. I'll take that, I'll take that. <laughs> um... And I, um, I just, I just wanted to try it. And um, I had one of my close friends. I used to always freestyle with him. Like back then, before I even knew what YouTube was, I would In post back. freestyle rapping videos on YouTube. And then my friend, he's the one that reminded me. I completely forgot. Yeah. He was like, "Yo, there's um, this Facebook post um that I saved from you, like back, back, back then." And he was like, "You wrote saying like, oh, one day I'm gonna be a famous rapper." And I was like. I said that? Like, I posted that? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I, I still couldn't believe it. And then that's what reminded me. I was like, oh, I remember I used to post YouTube videos, like, freestyling to beats and stuff. And I deleted all those things when I had that YouTube. But I was like, ah, I don't want this out there. <laughs> now, looking back, I'm like, I wish I had those. Dude, I think my cousin still has our old wrestling videos. See? That's dope. <laughs> yeah. See, I wish I had something like that. <laughs> we um, would go to the Swami and get the Rey Mysterio <laughs> <laughs> for real? my cousin had a two story house and you just see one of us jump from the, from the top just woo that's funny I think all of that's my aunts I've ever had holes in the walls because sorry yeah we would leave <laughs> my we would leave and then to get a, my mom would get a call like just I knew it was a bad call because my mom would look at me and she'd be like oh really I'm so sorry I'll tell him right now and then she hangs up and she's like tell me what you did I'm like nothing so why is there a wall? Why is there a hole in the red in the bedroom right now? Oh fuck! <laughs> My cousin got put through it. <laughs> That's funny, but just old times, old times that now. Look how you said. Biggest thing that I think that I'm taking from you is that looking back at everything you've ever done. Yeah. Right. Like you've went through the system. You're pioneering. Right, I think the one of the biggest things you can really take from this is you're pioneering in what society or what the numbers always say. Like if you go through a system, I don't know exact numbers. Usually we don't make it. Yeah. Right. You always end up back in the system. You always end up dead end job doing right. nothing, and you're here pioneering. So do you do you I respect take that? Thank you. Do you take that in any sort of way that, or have you ever looked back in like Hey, I could have been a statistic. Yeah, and, all the time, yeah. And now I am, like, people know me. Social media, obviously, is booming. But, like, you went from, you grew up in Los Angeles, right? Yep. Growing up in Los Angeles, in the hood, and now in Hollywood. Right. 
what's 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 the different Andrews that we get from there? What's the same Andrew that we get from there? Well, so when I was I was born like I grew up in a uh, MacArthur Park area, and then um, when I was adopted, that's when I moved to Hollywood, and then the part of Hollywood I was in was the hood, you know, and um, that's when my troubles came in from yeah. early teenage years yeah. to you know being a young adult yeah, yeah. and um so actually transitioning and then becoming like hollywood like becoming an actor and stuff and trying to be in the entertainment industry people that i know that grew up in hollywood and where we're from like that's you would never think like oh yeah i'm gonna be like an actor <laughs> one day i'm like you're in elementary what do you want to be when you grow up there's like nobody that grew up where i grew up that is pursuing this kind of career or anything and um it was different and a shock to everybody. I actually have um, a young homie of mine, and he's actually doing it too. And we grew up from the same neighborhood, and he's a lot younger than I am. And he's actually, you know, pursuing acting and stuff too now. So I was, I'm just like, damn, that's, you know, like, it's dope seeing somebody else do it as well. Because you don't really get people that grow up a certain way, get out of their comfort zone, and try to just completely do something different and better for themselves. So, yeah. Um, yeah, when I look back, I'm like, I could have just followed the path that, A, I thought I was going to go, and then B, everyone else thought I was going to go. But I just completely shocked them, shocked myself. And What was, yeah. what was the, that B? What was the option B? Where did everybody think you were going? From when I was in that lifestyle, just, um, you know, like you said, being another statistic. Yeah. You know, not going anywhere. You know, maybe spending, you know, the rest of my life in jail, you know, or... Like you said, just living a, I don't know, a normal, rough life. There's nothing wrong with living normal, and there's also nothing wrong with living rough. But choosing to be in that place because you just didn't want to get out of your comfort zone, I think that's when it sucks, you know? That, I think that's the biggest thing right now, too, is, like, the decisions, right? Mm -hmm. We all got to make a decision. Yeah. We can go back and stay, in the, stay wherever we're at, be with our homies, doing nothing, right. up to no good, how everybody says. Or we can make that change and be like, you know what? I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. I mean, for us now realizing, mm -hmm. like, shit, doing this that is different, we're the same way. From our town, from our city, like, no one has done this. Somebody's now trying to do it, but, like, I, I was telling him, like, we're putting blood, sweat, and tears to this yeah. every fucking week. Yep. Everything. It's fucking stressful. Yeah, not gonna lie, it's stressful being on this side. It, it's stressful. The production you, looks but good, but you're pioneering. But we're pioneering, yeah. And and it's the dream, yep. it's the goal, right? To share message, get share the message with people that need it. And now, shout out to everybody that's interacting with us, telling us their story. Like these random people on TikTok, IG, like, hey, I listened to your stuff, and because of this, I went through this, this, this. Damn, like, that's dope. What, I think what was like. Two weeks ago, someone told us I was on the verge of committing suicide. Damn. Ran into your videos on TikTok, listen, and I'm here. I'm like, damn. That's crazy. I'm like, our message. That's the goal. Because I was like, we can go into bullshit. We can talk up all right. the all the hookups and partying and stuff like that. But I'm going to be, I'm 26 now. I don't want to be 35 years old podcasting and just talking about. My partying. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just they're going to be like, hey, that fool's yeah, old. that's deep. No that was so, crazy. It's a purpose. Have yeah. you figured out your purpose right now? My purpose right now? Um, I think I'm still finding my purpose. Um, I think I have an idea of it. Yeah. You know, um, Of course, I want to, like I said, the, my friend, that my young homie who is changing his life now for the better and never forgetting where he came from, I look at that, I'm like, and it, and it kind of like I had nothing to do with that. He did that on his own, but like yeah. it makes me feel like, okay, there, you know, it, there's a chance for for everybody. You don't have to stay stuck where you're at. So I think, of course, I got you. influencing people and, and I don't know what is it like being a rope model kind of thing. Like yeah, I, I mean, that's you, my ultimate goal. You, I think you can really say that being a role model, and it's not necessarily putting it on your on your bio. Role model. <laughs> right, right, yeah. It's I would love to inspire people and, and make them be like, you know what? This dude went through this as a child, yeah. chose to do these troubled things as a teenager, ha was young being a father, and now he's where he's at. Like, if, if 
if people could look up to me it's, and like change their lives and I had a little bit of impact in that, man, that's a fucking blessing. Dude, it's being real. Yeah. It's it's being authentic and not forgetting, you know, the fuck ups that we did. Right. It's not forgetting everything we've been through. It's like, yo, I am here because I had to go through all this. I made all these decisions and I learned from it and now I am here. Now the same decisions I make now ain't the same ones I made when when I was yeah. a young kid, because definitely I would not be here. Yep. It's it's a different thought process. It's if I'm gonna go out with my boys, it's a different thought process than all right, let's go black out. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Who we fighting today? <laughs> Who we fighting today, my boy? <laughs> His cousin came from Oregon. He he knows it. He knows it. We we're talking That's about. Funny. He was like, damn fool. Hopefully we get that. And I'm like, no, oh, then then I gotta get you home, fool. Come on. But friend groups, this this is. He will tell you off the camera, and even right now, he's going to agree. About three years ago, he could tell you he didn't like me. Oh, okay. No, not at all? No. <laughs> I oh, used to coach him. I, yeah, used to coach I remember his... you used to post stuff about yeah, coaching. Yeah, yeah. So I still do it. Okay. But we're on the, hopefully no one listens to it, but we're on the verge of going our different way now. It's, it's different. Like, now time-wise, I got two right. kids. Yeah. I have, like, there's, I'm trying to. Look at my ROIs, my return on investment. I can change those kids' lives, and I love it. And I have for the last couple of years, but beyond this type of platform, we can reach a lot more. I agree. And started coached him for a while, and then I'm very close with his dad. And when it ca- it came time that we needed an extra coach, his dad was like, "Oh, bring him on." I was like, "Nah, dude. Like, he's, he's a little kid. Like, uh-huh. he doesn't really." Nah, he ended up being my right right hand man. That's cool. How how old are you? 23. 23. And you said you're what? 26. 26. Dang. I'm you're not, 30 this year. What? What's your sign? <laughs> what's your my, my rising is, um, no, I don't know any of those things. <laughs> no, I don't know. I know. I was like, fuck, he knows it. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't. When, when's your birthday? November 18th. I'm a Scorpio. I know that. Scorpio? Fuck yeah. Don't fucking you see tell it. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> Scorpio, that's, Scorpio gang. That's how we get along. Uh, they, they, Dylan's a Gemini, and they threw him under the bus last podcast. They said we don't fuck with Gemini boys, and he got to had to leave that part. I'm just kidding, but I think that now, like, you're in a relationship, right? Yeah. How long have you been in a relationship? Can we bring that up? Um, maybe not the number. We don't want to throw a number. But how is it? Now in a relationship, what do you, how is that process? Do you look for certain qualities? Is it a certain, uh, hey, are you doing something? Like, it's not like before, like, let's just go party and we'll have a good time. Well, the, touching on the relationship stuff is always, um, I it's guess, kind of tough. Tough, because uh, I've never, um, that's one, like, place in my life where it's like I've, I need to be better at and learn more about myself and i think i guess i never really had time to learn about myself in general i've been like in and out of relationships since i was like 14 so it's like serious girlfriend fuck around serious girlfriend fuck around and i've never really like yeah i guess took the time to learn about myself and um i feel like every relationship i've been in that i go to i've been a better version of myself but um it's still something that um learning that i'm grateful for because you know, if you have somebody who can go through that process with you, you know, while you're learning about yourself and you have a partner that can understand and not necessarily understand and be okay with whatever fuck-ups you're doing in life. And I'm not just yeah. talking about, like, if you're cheating and shit. I'm just saying, like, maybe not having your goals lined up or, you know, maybe just everything yes. that goes into being in a relationship. I think if you can have a partner who goes through that with you and helps you, then that's dope. And, um, you know, that's what I'm grateful for that. Um, you know, you have somebody who is helping you yeah, yeah. with your journey, you know? So that's the sensitive stuff. Relationships. Yeah. yeah for, I think for any, for everybody, for everybody, <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, man. I think, uh, I'm a, I've quoted Jackie like three, four times throughout my podcast. And she said one time, I think now almost a year ago, she said, People want to do relationship stuff without the title. Yeah. She said this shit like a year ago, and I was like, damn. That's so true. I was like, yeah. it's true, because 
now like we've we've gone out and everything. I have my girlfriend, and we're going through that process. Uh-huh. It, it this would one thing I'll tell everybody when you're going through a new journey in business or entrepreneurship or finding yourself, you're gonna lose a lot of people in yeah. your life. You're gonna go through transitions to do something better, and the people around you may not want you to do better. I said it this last time, they might not want you to do better because that may mean that they're not gonna be in your picture. Yeah, they're not gonna be a part of your life because that just uh, sucks, right? When you get to that like point in your life where you start realizing shit like that, oh, man. it's so hard to um, be like, you know, I gotta cut you off, I gotta move on, friends, relationships, and like yeah. it's pulling me back. Yeah, because you don't want to be, yeah. and you don't want to be five years down the line and doing the same stuff. Yeah, Mayweather said it best: if I'm taking a month and I'm still doing the same stuff, if three months, six months, a year, and I haven't progressed, I wasted time already. So, with you, what what is your thought process throughout now your journey of movies? Is that what you're focusing more on right now? Movies? Yeah, for sure. Acting is um my long-term dream goal. Um, but I try to, I've always wanted to create, you know, different paths for myself as well. Yeah. Um, I'm into, I want to create a clothing. Well, I, I just created a clothing. I see. No, 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 no. Well, I, I saw this. I was like, I got to ask him. Everything's going on. You're coming out soon. Yeah. With clothing. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm still going through like trying to figure out what's the process of how to do it correctly oh, and so stuff tough. but like if you find out let, let me know oh, shit, I got <laughs> we're you. trying to figure this shit but, out um, too like yeah I just this is actually I'm wearing one of my shirts one of my first drops um, so I'm wearing it um, and it's just uh, that's one thing that I want to go into and, and do it correctly take my time with it and yeah. you know try to see what people are into and what they like and keep true to myself too you know yeah. and um so, so acting, clothing line, and that's basically, like, my, that I can think of right now where I'm going. Yeah. What's that the, I'm focused on, at What's least. the meaning behind the name of your brand? Say your name of your brand so we all know this. Yeah, so, um, I'll turn around real quick. Yeah, <laughs> okay. look at this. See? Can you see? Of the most. Of the most excellent. So, it's called Of the Most Excellent, and it took me a while to find my name. I had a couple other name ideas, and ideas and it, it just wasn't working with me i would stick with it for like a month two months and i'd be like I'd, i was doubting it too much really and i was like you know if i'm doubting something too much it's probably not it okay i figured this shit out in like a week i'm like put it wrote them down i looked at it every morning nah, i like that one yeah see if that I happens like that then that's dope it took me a while and i was like nope 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 yeah nope. maybe not <laughs> and then i just wanted something that was like you know, like, I try to be the best I am in life. I try yeah. to be um, great at whatever I do. You know, sometimes I fail, but at least I tried, you know. So um, I wanted something that signified, like, you know, being the best. And um, to what you gone through. Yeah. So I typed in on Google. I was, I, I, I typed in, um, I just typed in best, B-E-S-T. And I was, like, trying to see if I can find something Here's that, something that yeah. you know, motivates me or something like an exactly. acronym or some shit. And I yeah. typed in best. And then the first thing on top, it was best definition of the most excellent. Da, 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 all these different, but the main description of what best is was of the most excellent. And I was like, I like that. It's a little long, but I like that. And I was like, that's exactly what I need. And, and then I looked it up. I checked Instagram for the name. It's available, available. Check the website, available, available. available. And I was like, this is it. Yeah. I don't have to switch anything up. I don't have to try to um, add a period here or something to switch my name. And I was like, yeah. it came to me without me even trying. And uh. then that was it. And I used the Leafs thing, the laurel wreaths, because like, you know, and like the ancient Greeks and Romans and all that. Don't tell me you have that tattoo too. No, I don't. <laughs> Not yet. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you know, it's a little, the design was a little bigger than I thought it was going to be. But when I, when I actually got these today, um, picked them up today. And I was like, damn, it's kind of big. And I was like, I like it. And um, instead of being, I was just like, I thought I was going to be a little like, oh, they're a little bigger than I thought. But I was like, no, that shit stands out. I fuck with it. And I was like, I'm going to wear it today to the damn podcast. Yeah, so, we got that exclusive. Yes, yeah. sir. 
So I'm excited. Yeah. When's the When's the official drop for this? Uh, it's gonna be like in a month. I'm gonna uh, take, like I said, uh, prepare the website, do everything correctly. I'm starting off with minimal drops, like you know, just like s- small minimal. It's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, man. <laughs> it's expensive. Small minimal drops, and yeah. then <laughs> once I see that it's rocking, then I'll go a little bit yes deeper into it. Nah, that. I don't want to spend no five, ten thousand dollars and then like, you know, you yeah, don't see no like return. They're like, oh, you gotta go heavy. I'm like, fool, uh, not yet. <laughs> We're gonna do minimal, let that sell out. I had and some I had help. I talked to somebody who they run like a whole kind of like a where I don't know what it's called, but like a warehouse thing where they you go to them, they have their designers, they create your design, they yeah. can print your stuff, they have all the different products, they can make your flyers, they can make your website. It's like a one stop shop for clothing. We need and that. um I was like, and I had like a little meeting and then they were just like, oh, what you, what's your idea? And I was like, my idea is very simple, minimal. I was like, um, I already have a few different pieces that I want to drop. Like the next, I already have like an idea for my next drop and I already have, like my next two drops, I already have my ideas of how to start giving the idea of, to people of what my brand is and what yeah. it is. So um, I'm excited for that. And he was just like, start simple. He was like, you know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll, Add the crazy patches and color different colorways and add the fucking it, it, rhinestones and people try to be what other brands are. Yeah, he says a lot of people try to do too much and then they'll drop like ten thousand into the brand right away. Like, oh, give me all these hoodies, this and that. And then he was like, and then they don't sell anything. And they're like, fuck, I failed. And he was like, so I think it's smart that you're starting off. You're like, I'm gonna start with a couple t-shirts. Yeah, and I'll expand to getting s- some hats or some sweaters and whatever. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. You know. But it's going to. It's going to. Yeah. For all you people ever doubting, too, too it's bad gonna for work. You. It's yeah. still going to work. Yes. But that's the create and the biggest thing for anybody listening in that's going to start a brand, a movement, a company, whatever it is, young entrepreneur, you're older, great. Thank you for listening in. Just keep going. Facts. The yep. first drop might not work, but keep going. Yep. Because it may not be the first one, second one, but yeah. it may be the third one. Yeah. And someone told me, they're like, hey, what are you going to do for your, like, official 100th episode? I'm like, I don't know. I got to get there first. And they're just like, well, you better do something big. I'm like, hmm, I got to get there. Like, we reached finally, hold, like, 1,000 subscribers. Yeah, we got to give that. We got to give that. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And, and we took it in. And still right now, I'm just like, hmm, it hasn't set in yet. Right. But... I think more is because, and we said it before, I've said it before, I don't want to hype it up too much because, like, yo, we still have a lot of work. Right. I set a, I don't know, maybe yourself too, I set a goal too high. Like, I want to be here. So I gotta, All the time. So I, I got to. All the time. I got to keep going. I got to work to it. I got to put in the work. I got to go through, through all the emotions and everything. But until I get there, I'll feel it for a little bit, and then I got to keep going. Throughout your journey, this podcast started with mental health, and I want to bring this up. How has that process for you mentally, emotionally been to not right now? Have you gone through events? Have you gone through certain emotions that, you know, some people tell you, I did, come on, get over this shit? Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, um, it took me a while to, I'm still, like, not caring, like, necessarily what other people think of me or or trying to impress people or trying to any of those things like I, I fed off of that so much for so long yeah and then I just wasn't making me happy and um like I said I, I'm I'm almost 30 and I'm barely now being like I don't need to care what people think of me anymore I don't need to live my life for them you know I have to live my life and if I'm happy with myself then they'll be happy with me you know yeah so, it, it I go through that a lot. I, I was for so long, you know. Like I said, um, I went through a lot, man. I in and out of foster homes like for nine years. Um, went through a lot of crazy stuff, and um, I used to think of that all the time. And then I I would use that not necessarily as an excuse, but you know, with a lot of my failed relationships and failed friendships and shit. And I would be like, whoa. You you know, it's because of what I've been through that I can't give these people what they need. It is an excuse. You know, like, it, yeah. and it was my excuse. And um, and I still to this it's like, that was my excuse. That's what helped me get to where I'm at now. And at that time, I wasn't 
strong enough to be like, I don't, I can push past that. And um, it took me some time, but I finally got to a point where I was like, I don't need to talk, feel that my childhood is ruining my, my, who I am now. I'm barely getting to that point where I was like, I can be who I want to be. I don't need to be, you know, what I went yeah. through. And um, it feels good right now, like not caring what somebody thinks of me, you yeah. know? Like, man, some people, like I said, they'll see me on Dancing in the Street. They're like, aren't you doing movies, man? Like, what are you doing on the aren't street? Aren't you should be over this already? And I'm just like, before I used to be like, oh, yeah, they're right. Like, what am I doing? Like, I need to get away from this soon. Yeah. I'm like, it'll come when it comes, man. I'm, my journey is my journey, you know? I can't rush my life and feel like I'm a failure because, like, oh, well, you're almost 30. Why aren't you, you know, the next Leonardo DiCaprio? Like, why aren't you there? Be like, well, shit, you don't fucking think I want to be there? Yeah. Of course <laughs> I do, but shit, it's going to take me some time, so. One thing we've always know? said is we see, like, for us, like, obviously, Joe Rogan is a GOAT. Uh, the Pivot Podcast, Nelk Boys, Full Send, they're all, like, GOATs. They're all doing it. But, like, I've, I've said it from the beginning, and that's why I tell a lot of people, I'm like, we all idolize them, but no one says the journey. No one talks about the journey. Exactly. You know, uh, yep. the Nalk boys on their podcast, he came out on one. They talked about their journey. He was like, dude, my mom loaned me 250000 for our brand. They were coming from Canada back. They talked about their story, and that's the same thing with us. Now it's like, yo, we just got to gotta be open on our story. We're doing it now, and then maybe, maybe a year, two years, three, whatever it is, for you maybe next, next week, a month, six months, it might have a break. Yeah. But we cannot get there until we we had to go through all this. Yep. So that's the biggest thing, our biggest thing. There she is. The biggest thing is just normalizing that we all have a story. Yep. That you got to have a journey. You got to go through ups and downs. You you have to go through losses to in order to know what the wins feel like. You got to go through the wins and then still to feel what losses feel like. Yep. You know, without losses, you can't win. Without losses, you can't learn. Because you don't, when as taking it back, like as a little kid, when you fall down from the first time walking, you don't know how it is to get to get up. Right Right now, maybe you didn't land a, a, a one of the acting jobs, but that's what made you into who you are now. Yeah. Because you failed there, you got to this one. And how you said, you couldn't believe that you landed paranormal. Yeah. But whatever you did before that, landed you there. So, this is this always airs on a Monday, like seven in the morning. When you drive to work, you're gonna listen to this. But everybody looks on a Monday for the affirmation or a quote that they're gonna reside with for that week. Do you live by one? Do you always remember one or one that you can just drop on us? Sorry, we got a good question. Technical difficulties. But it's because Andrew was thinking about his quote of the day. Uh, no, I looked it up, huh? No. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> had enough time. I should have. Damn. Sorry. Hit it. Do you, do you always reside with one? Do you always think of one throughout the morning? Throughout so, your day? Um, your life? Nah, man. I, 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 I wish. I wish I could, like, sit here and be like, yes, I do. And this is my All quote. All motivational and shit, huh? This is my quote for everybody. I really wish I could. Yeah. Um, but I'm just being honest. No, there isn't, like, a specific quote that I read or... Think about on a daily. Drop, um, one. Drop one. But, you know, sometimes you just. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, it's just. <laughs> no, um, headshots. <laughs> um, no, I just. If I have to think, it's not. Think about it, talking to your young self. Oh, dang, that was nice. Um, I would say. It's very simple. Don't give up. Damn. That's it. Don't give up. There's so much more that you can't see right now. And just keep going. I think that's what I'd say. I love it. All right. Just because and today, when this airs, it's probably already past it, but today is a Canelo fight. So we're gonna toast with some tequila, yes, yes sir. I'm so Did you excited. bet today? No, I, I'm not a gambling man. I, you know, don't start. Every time I've gambled, I've lost. So I've had my few times, and I'm good. But well, you gambled on yourself, and you won. Hey, that's oh. right. 
Come on, my boy. That's right. I like that. Yeah, that was good, huh? That was good. But I'm going to. Are you guys watching the fight? Yes. Oh. Angela got to <laughs> from work. Uh, you want to shot your Tito's tequila? You're going to keep drinking yours? Um, I will do a shot of that. Bam. Give me the other red cup, dude. Got the ice. But, again, right now, waiting. We've been at this for a while. Go subscribe. You got to follow all the platforms. We're still growing. We're continuing. We're pioneering. But I do want to honestly give you a huge shout-out, Andrew, for coming all this way today. Um, Thank you. Giving us some of your of your jewels and everything because, man, I've known you for, I mean, just social media-wise, but known you for a while and I know we've been trying to set this up for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been a busy dude. You, you've you you've been working, and it's commanding. And I want to tell you personally that everything you're doing doesn't go unnoticed. Your landing roles, uh, going to dance at, at either Santa Monica or Hollywood, you're doing things that for other people, they may give up throughout the process. And you have pioneered, you're continuing, you're being an inspiration, not just to us and to me, but to somebody else that may have the same storyline as you. I appreciate that. They're going to look at you and be like, yo, if he did it, why can't me? Your son, I'm sure he's looking at his dad and be like, damn, my dad is this person. My dad is a, he can bust a backflip if he wanted to <laughs> or front flip over five people if he wanted to, but my dad can do whatever he want. So from bottom of our heart, bottom of my heart, I want to give you the flowers and give you the shout Thank out you. that you are doing it and you are being inspiration to our Hispanics, to our people, and to the young dancers that's trying to do it, young actor that's trying to do it. You're doing it. I appreciate you. And I just want to say um, you are doing it because you are able to bring somebody like me to here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Thanks. So I appreciate you. Damn. Yeah, man. Yo, it's Toast Alive, baby. There it is. Toast Here Alive. It is. Yeah. Shout Cheers. out. Subscribe. Let's go. Woo! That was good. That was great.